Welcome back to the Jimbo Hannon Show at one 560 jimbo one 866 505 as Mike Gracia reports that the House has voted to create a panel to look into the January 6th insurrection at the Capitol. The yeas are 252, the nays are 175, the bill is passed. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announcing the vote as the U.S. House of Representatives approved the creation of an independent commission to investigate the January 6th insurrection at the U.S. Capitol. During debate, Democrats and Republicans voiced support for the commission. We need to get to the bottom of this. This is about facts. It's not partisan politics. But Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene came out against an investigation. The media is going to use this to smear Trump supporters. In the Senate, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell said Wednesday morning he will oppose the legislation. Mike Gracia, Washington. Well, let's talk about that with uh, Jonathan Bidlack uh, as uh, we take your calls at one 866 jimbo The vote, I note, was 252 to 175. That is to say 35 Republicans voted in support. Uh, I suppose there are any number of bases on which you could uh, oppose this uh, commission. Uh, who's on the commission, what authority they would have, uh, uh, what all they would look into, whatever. Uh, but the idea that the, what happened January 6th should not be uh, fully explored, uh, I think, is is not a good notion. Uh, then again, of course, you can have the question, has it already been fully explored? In other words, is there anything unknown, undecided, that this commission could possibly arrive at? So, Jonathan Bidlack, your take. No, I think that's I think that's right, Jimbo. I um I think that uh, you know this is a very a very significant event in our nation's recent history, and I think there were there are a lot of complicating factors that uh, that that made that happen that, that should be investigated. I mean things like, you know, what was the role of the Capitol Police, and you know why wasn't the National Guard called in earlier, and all these sorts of questions I think are are things where there's some information out there in disparate parts, but I think we would be well served by having people who have expertise in law enforcement and and you know just how Congress operates and so on, um, really thinking about this. And, you know, of course, the the, the operative example in, in recent memory is the 9-11 Commission, which, you know, was similarly bipartisan. And uh, I think the report that was produced was, you know, well-respected on both sides as being an honest take on, on uh, and, and, and a, a, you know, a legitimate attempt at trying to get at the truth. Um, I think, you know, there's always the risk that people are going to try to politicize whatever whatever report there is. But, um, you know, I think that I think that our elected officials owe it to to the American citizenry to uh, to really, you know, think through think through what happened and uh, and, 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 you know, do uh, do a good faith effort at, at getting toward the truth. Yeah. I mean, after all, I mean, the, the charge that it will be automatically used to smear Trump backers. Well, of course, I've heard a lot of people uh, in support of Donald Trump say that uh, this was a lot of trouble caused by outside agitators, that it wasn't just the people in the crowd addressing Trump, that the trouble on Capitol Hill started before his speech uh, 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 south of there uh, had even concluded. And that, uh, therefore, if in fact uh, it wasn't Trump backers who were who wound up being arrested, but outside agitators, well, that would simply exonerate uh, Trump backers in general. I, I fail to see how uh, an investigation would automatically lead to a smearing of backers of President Trump. Let the chips fall where yeah, they I mean, may. I think that's I think that's exactly right. I think again that uh, you know the uh, I mean to some degree I mean you know if 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 you don't believe that the president played any role then there's really nothing to fear right I mean people are always going to go and you know spin whatever for their own political purposes um, but look I mean the proposal that's been put forth is you know it would have equal membership from both parties which I think is very important um, and I you know I personally like the idea of there being something independent uh, rather than you know having having committees in the house where you know uh you know it would be overseen by by democrats which I think then runs the risk of not being, you know, nonpartisan and not being bipartisan. So, for, you know, for me personally, I think it's a much better idea to say let's have a separate, a separate commission that's going to actually do a good faith investigation here um, that brings in, you know, experts from both sides. And uh, you look at what the president actually said. First of all, I will grant anyone who wants to say that he was tone deaf, which he's been on more than one occasion, and uh, failed to size up the crowd and. Uh, 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 address his remarks accordingly. Here are some of the direct quotes from that speech. We will never give up. We will never concede. Our country has had enough. We will not take it anymore. And that's what this is all about. And uh, 
Let's see here. You'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. And then he also said this, and that was, everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. He did say that. That is very true. And it came time to urging uh, peaceful behavior on Capitol Hill. The president did, in fact, issue a tweet to that effect, but it was like a couple of hours into uh, into what was happening on Capitol Hill. So uh, if you want to say that the president acted rashly, I wouldn't argue with that for one minute. Uh, impeachably, I don't think so. Well, and, and again, this is this is the whole point for an investigation as well, right? Is that I think all of us have have sort of bits and pieces of knowledge that that you know maybe from you know some from reliable sources and some from unreliable sources, and and you know my my view is I mean I mean think of it this way, think of the alternative. Imagine that you know there had been uh, you know people external to this country had gone and uh, and attacked the Capitol and managed to go and and you know breach breach the Capitol in the exact same way as happened on January. 6. I think both parties realistically would be calling immediately for an investigation into why this happened, why was this breach possible, you know, why were the Capitol Police overwhelmed, and all of these sort of questions. And so I don't think that just because something can be spun in a way that would be partisan um, should really you know, change us from, from the reality that, that it's, it's worthy of, of being investigated. I mean, you know, look, I mean, even at the height of the Civil War, you know, the U.S. Capitol wasn't breached, right? I mean, this was the first time since 1812. I mean, that's a that's a you know a very very noteworthy moment in our nation's history, and and I think I think it's you know legitimate. And and I say all of that, of course, that you know if this were if this were being proposed or going to be done in a way that was you know I think um, you know meant to be a sham or meant to be politicized, um, you know I I do not think that should that would be supported. But you know look we had we had 35 Republicans just go and vote uh, you know in the House uh, in, in in favor, and I think that that you know it may not be so Sort of, uh, you know, the full Republican caucus, but I think that, you know, that does show that there's at least a good faith effort being made to, uh, uh, to you know, have a commission that that uh, both sides should should at least consider. One eight six six five zero Jimbo. One eight six six five zero five four six two six. And by the way, if you missed any of tonight's show or would like to hear more of previous shows, then be sure to check out the Jimbo Hannon Show on Apple Podcasts or wherever you look for a podcast. One eight six six five zero Jimbo. One eight six six Five oh five four six two six. We'll be back on the Jim Bohannon Show in just a moment. Welcome back to the Jim Bohannon Show at one eight six six five oh Jimbo one eight six six five oh five four six two six with Jonathan Bidlack of the governance program at the R Street Institute online at r the word street dot org. Here is uh, Stan in Kilgore, Texas. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, what should be investigated is why this was such a poorly run election that left people questioning the results of it that led to the protests that went to the Capitol. And uh, I have no problem with expanding, for example, the role of such a commission. What do you think about that, Jonathan uh, Bidlack? That has also been suggested by uh, by a few uh, Republican senators. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, I mean, I think I think it's totally within Congress's rights to decide to investigate, you know, whatever it is that they that they want to investigate or that they think is important. Um, you know, and I don't I don't really fault them for that. I mean, you know, back in the day, you know, Congress didn't investigate, for example, the shooting of a number of Republicans that took place on a on a baseball field in Alexandria, Virginia. And I think that that was a mistake. So, you know, my personal view is that we should be, you know, it, when when serious things like this happen, it's totally within the purview of Congress to uh, uh, to decide to investigate and. And, and, and again, make a good faith effort to get at the truth and understand what happened. So, um, you know, if they decide that there are other things that they want to investigate besides what happened on January 6th or, or you know, as part of that investigation or as something separate, I think that's totally reasonable. To uh, David in Carryville, Florida. Hello. Yes, sir. I have retired city of Miami police, just got home. But anyway, uh, who's going to do the investigation? Shouldn't it be like someone that's not just out to do Trump in, and if they find out if it was a Democratic person helping orchestrate this chaos, we won't hear anything of it. They won't be prosecuted. Just well, like I doubt know. that the, this commission would be made up strictly of people from one party or the other, uh, Jonathan. 
No, it wouldn't. It would actually have five members from each party, which I think is really important. I mean, you know, as I said earlier, I think that, you know, if this were if this were meant to just be a sort of sham investigation where where, you know, one side was going to dominate the discussions, I don't think there's any value for that. And I don't think there's any reason why anyone should should support it. But, you know, when there's a good faith effort to go and uh, and, you know, have it be a bipartisan uh, a bipartisan uh, commission with members who have expertise from a number of different, uh, you know, different areas. I think I think that's uh, that makes a lot of sense to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is not, I would think, a time that is particularly pleasing to the uh, R Street Institute. Uh, you have a Democratic president, and albeit by slim margins, a Democratic control of both houses of Congress. Uh, what are other areas uh, to which you might point and say that's a problem? Oh man, uh, we might have to go and uh, talk for a whole other hour on on that. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> you know, I think I think generally, you know, there have been a lot of headlines that the era of big government is back, and I think that that's a really unfortunate, uh, you know, unfortunate uh, uh, you know occurrence. And I think that you know, at the end of the day, I mean, generally speaking, it's never a good idea when you have united power with either with either major party because you end up not having as good oversight. And so, you know, we do a lot of work, uh, you know, trying to go and have you know good oversight over the executive branch and i think that's always tough when you have uh when you have you know united power in congress of the same party as the president and so that might be a little bit more of a challenge than uh you know than it might have been in a situation where if we had uh you know more actively divided government 